So now that you've had some time to just kind of look around and check out some of these code editors and also learn a little bit about the history of ES, uh, ECMAScript, and JavaScript, uh, now it's time to write some actual code. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to use our basic template here on our code editor from Sublime. And I have my default HTML head and body and script. And remember that the script is where you type your programming. Uh, for JavaScript, especially if it says text slash JavaScript here. Um, if you don't type it here, and let's say you type it here, like the alert, this is our go-to <laughs> function that we're going to use a lot when we're testing to see if we have JavaScript enabled. So if I write alert hello world here above the script tag, and I open this in a browser, I'll just see alert hello rendered as HTML. So if I right click, um, any, remember anywhere outside of the thing that I've highlighted, view page source, it'll say alert hello. But the alert is supposed to throw a window box at us, uh, like so. So I've cut it from here and I'm pasting it back here and then refreshing. And this is what I should actually see this hello, not hello here. So if you want to make sure that your web page is working and that you have JavaScript actually running, you always want to throw out this alert here. Um, if for whatever reason, let's say you converted this to text text and then you try to run it, well then you'll know, okay, my alert's not working because this is the wrong syntax. You know, I could also misspell it here. And then of course my JavaScript wouldn't work. So, uh, because the code editor kind of does a lot of this code completion for you, most of the time you won't have to worry about this, but just in the case you're writing from scratch or you're on, you know, like maybe you're coding competitively, uh, you may want to remember that, you know, like these things matter in the end. Okay, so that said, remember alert is always going to be our default check. Um, some people also use console log. So I'll talk about that in a second, but default check to make sure JavaScript is running. Okay, so that's number one, but some people also prefer not to see a little pop window, but they'll use something called console. And we'll say console right here, and we'll say console log hello, the same thing. And I've also put a semicolon here. So anytime you write code in JavaScript, you want to put semicolons at the end because if you don't, um, JavaScript may sometimes run into an error. Think of semicolons as good grammar for your JavaScript language. If you don't put it here, JavaScript can still guess, oh, you probably meant to end the sentence here and do a good job of probably guessing where your sentences end. Uh, it's the same thing as like if you don't put periods at the end of your sentence. People who read it can probably guess where the sentence ends and where the next one begins. But if you have long code samples um, or long passages of essay or text and you don't put any periods, you could see how that would get very annoying and very difficult to read even for the best reader or best compiler. So always be sure to add semicolons. And I'll talk about more in detail when you need the semicolon and when you don't need the semicolon. But for the most part, um, when in doubt, use the semicolon. So the console is something that comes with your browser by default. So you'll notice I'm using Chrome. That's the default browser that I have on my MacBook. And I'm going to guess that you probably have this too, or you may have Safari, which is your default browser here. So if I open Safari and let's say I right click and open with Safari here, I still get the alert, hello, but notice how it's a little different from uh, before. It doesn't pop up a big box like this. Uh, it pops up in window here, which is just because Mac decided that for their alerts, they're going to be more graceful about it. Remember, Apple is very um, huge on design, so like their way of presenting code is different from Chrome. And you'll run into this a lot as a developer, 
browsers can handle your JavaScript code differently. And as a developer, you have to learn to test in different browsers and make sure that if your browser does something differently, um, like in Safari versus Chrome, you have to be aware of it and think of a workaround. Sometimes these things are not ideal uh, because they might ruin your um, customer's experience. You know, like that's a huge part of web development too, making sure that your code looks the same or works the same as best as possible. Some stuff you have no control over, like Apple can completely change the way your web page behaves tomorrow if they decide that they want to completely redo all of their JavaScript for whatever reason. But most um, browsers like Safari, Chrome, and then IE and uh, Microsoft's Edge now, uh, you know, have their own rendering system, but they all try to follow like an international standards as dictated by the W3C. So W3C is the worldwide consortium and they basically exist to make sure that all browsers kind of come to an agreement on like certain web standards that work for everybody. And at the end of the day, like Chrome and, you know, Apple and Microsoft don't have to adhere to these standards, but if they don't, they risk losing, you know, customers because if some customers have a better experience on a Chrome product, that means that less people are going to end up using Safari and or, you know, Microsoft's product. And so, you know, to keep up with the competition, they always try to agree on standards and do, you know, basically the same things that other browsers can do. So that's uh, a little history on the W3C and, um, you know, like basically what's going on when we type our code here. So the short and long of it is basically you have the alert and the console log. Uh, just kind of going back to console log here. If I right click anywhere on my web page um, and I just click on console, notice I'm in Chrome doing this. And let me go ahead and refresh this page here. So I get my default alert hello. And on this page here, I should see a console log hello too. So I am not seeing it right now. So let's go ahead and see what happened. So I, I don't have it here because I haven't saved my file. So uh, if you notice here, like you see a little circle and that just basically means like I have not saved my file. So this could happen to you. So easiest way to fix this is to do file and then save. And then once you've saved it, if I come back here and refresh it, I still get my alert. And this time, if I go to console, I should see the hello. So think of the console as like, you know, an extra set of tools that come with your web browser. Um, in this case, I'm using Chrome. And this basically outputs any kind of code you want here as opposed to here. And this is kind of like a softer way of like testing to see if your code works. So you'll also notice that I have some gray text here and gray text here. So whenever I put two forward slashes, that makes whatever I write here um, ignored by the JavaScript browser um, because uh, the compiler, I mean, because this is what's known as a comment and comments are for uh, people, other people like you to read your code, uh, but not for the computer to process. So this is like a handy way of like referencing, hey, you know, this um, line over here does um, whatever, like, so the next line alert throws out a box. I have default check to see if JavaScript is running. So by default, I want to throw out the alert and see that box. But if I put two forward slashes like this, notice now how this is turned gray. And so when I uh, save my file here and I refresh, you'll notice that like, I don't see the alert pop up anymore. Um, but I still see the console here. So some people use the console instead of alerts to just test that their JavaScript is running. So um, it's a softer way of doing that. And of course, you know, in the console, the nice thing about it is that I can do more JavaScript here in the console, but this won't affect the way my web page actually renders. Think of the console as kind of like a simple place to do some basic testing. 
So I could say 2 plus 2, and I could get the answer 4, because JavaScript will also do basic math in the console at least. I can't do that here. I can't say 2 plus 2 equals 4, or just 2 plus 2. Uh, if I try, I'll refresh this page here, and you'll notice that nothing happens because my web page is looking at this and ignoring it. There's nothing for it to do. Um, sometimes you may also get an error. And uh, so like if I say, uh, let's see, 2 plus 2 equals 4, and I save this, it'll say uncaught reference error, invalid left-hand side in the assignment. So the console is a good way to tell you like, oh, I have errors on my web page. If you go to people's web pages like CNN.com or somewhere else, um, we could actually try this, CNN, uh, and then of course I right click here and inspect. You'll see that they have a lot of errors on their page. And some of these errors aren't their fault, some of these are just like uh, some things that I have uh, done because like I, I, it looks like I'm blocking some of these ads here. Uh, but also like in some cases like yeah so it says like uh, let's see timeout occurred fast lane so some of these are like their own like you know uh, errors and they may be uh, working on it still or trying to fix it but it's it's a good way to kind of understand okay you know this place is where you know uh, I can go to do some JavaScript testing and I can test out some code or I can see what other people are doing in their code the other handy thing about the developer tools is that you can click on this elements tab here and basically see um, you know, the entire JavaScript for a page. So um, I'm actually looking at my own page here. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to right click and inspect. And um, this case here, I right clicked on a link. As last time I wasn't able to do that because I was trying to view page source. Um, so you'll notice that I can't view page source but I can still inspect. So when I go over to inspect, I have the ability to kind of go through the entire web page. Um, and we call this the live version of the web page because it matches up to, you know, all the different uh, parts of the web page, all the components. And I have the ability to kind of just look at each individual component and look at some of the stylings on the right hand side. This is the CSS. Um, I can also look at, um, you know, some of the other uh, the colorings and stuff like that and if there are images I can go in there and probably grab the images So we'll, we'll learn how to become more familiar with this tool um, This tool also exists in Safari uh, If you want to get it from Safari, you just basically go to preferences and Then advanced and then of course you want to show the develop menu in the bar if you're on a Windows computer and you're using edge uh, It's pretty similar. You can include the developer tools from right clicking and looking for developer tools but anytime you're like doing web development you always want to find the developer tools so the developer tools for Safari like are just under this develop tab and then of course I can show web inspector and then of course I get the all familiar console again and if I refresh this page uh, you can see I get the syntax error because that's where this is coming so we're gonna put two forward slashes to comment this code out. And if I save and then I hit uh, refresh over here, you'll notice that that error goes away. And let's see here. If I click all on this Safari tab, it's a little different from Chrome. You can see I have the hello. So it looks like we weren't able to see the hello because we're on the errors tab here on my version. But if you click all, you should be able to see your console log. Okay, so that wraps up all a little bit about like the the hello and you know also the W3C. Uh, a lot of stuff we covered. If any stuff like kind of still seems unfamiliar, please go ahead and check out this video again and try to just refresh. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.